Jackie. Your sister, Jackie. Wondered if you could give me a call. Thanks. Mark, it's Jackie again. I hate to be a bother, but I'd really like to talk to you. Please call. Hi, Mark. Jackie again. It's really been a long time, hasn't it? I miss you a lot. Really need to talk. Jackie! <coughs> Jesus. Jackie! Jackie? Jesus Christ. Did you crap yourself? Hello? Jackie. Hey. I'm punch drunk again Lost in my mind I'm hoping in the end I'll have something to find I'm punch drunk again I'm not sure if I'll last Say hi to my friends If they ask Endless reflections on either side of me Stuck in a maze I can't see My fingers are slipping on the edge of a cliff Sunset while standing on the shore. I'm just a melancholy boy who wants more. Surrounded by redwoods and counting down from four. Ready to go back through the door. I'm punch drunk again. I'm stuck in my mind. Hoping in the end 
I'll have something to find I'm punch drunk again I'm not sure if I'll last Say hi to my friends If they ask Hey. I got a call that someone was parked out in front of my school. What are you doing out here, Mark? James, right? Yeah, hey. Yeah. You didn't answer my question. What? What the hell are you doing out here? Please save the. My station's doing a story on my school because I know that they're not going to pay for that. I'm not going to waste your time. No, no, no. Nothing like that. I'm just, I mean, can a guy not, you know, watch his daughter get off the bus? Yeah. So are you going to tell me what's really going on here? My wife and I are having some troubles. She, uh, I'm, not, I'm not at home right now. And you know, I'm just going to catch a glimpse of Rachel. I don't get to see her much. Well, you're going to have to figure out something. You can't sit out here. People are on edge. They're gonna think you're a pervert or something. Right, no, I get it. I can see how it would look like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get a pair of binoculars, for God's sakes. So don't be an idiot. I gotta get back to the school, all right? Get out of here before someone calls 911. Right, no worries. Yeah, I can't help you otherwise. <laughs> okay. Jesus. Hey, Mark. Hey. So, you need any help with that story on the mirror? Nope. Uh, almost finished. Are you sure? Because I'd really love to learn the investigative side. Yeah, so I've heard. You know, Ernie's giving me a hand on this one, but uh, if we need any help, I'll let you know. Well, Ernie's actually out on a run with Juan, and he's going to be gone for at least several no. hours. No. I said I can handle it. Fine. You all right? I'm fine! Jesus! What is it with people around here? Fine. Enjoy your hair of the dog. Story on the mare? It's shit. It's useless. I thought you were supposed to be a good investigative reporter. You're supposed to do an expose on the mare's financial problems. That? I can't use that. There's nothing there. There's no meat to it. 
Are you hitting the bottom mark? Look, I, I can't have a drunk on my staff. Half your staff are drunks. I'm no drunk. I might have a beer every now and then, but that's it. Oh, bullshit! I can smell the booze on here from here. Look, Ari. Everything's gone to hell, okay? My whole life has gone to hell. Amanda kicked me out. I mean, it's not over. We're still trying to work things out. But... Well, it's like this. While you're putting your marriage back together, I've got a little problem of my own. You see that out there? I've got a newsroom to run. I need news. And to get news, I gotta have a good reporter. You've got one, okay, right here. Man, I hope so. I wanna bet on the mark I used to know. Find him, okay? Look, you gotta know. This is your last chance. If you don't perform on this one, you're done. You're out. I don't have a choice anymore. I'll take care of it. This particular assignment came from the publisher herself. And it beats the hell out of me is why it's so important to her. The store is in Dayton. That's where you're from, right? Yeah, I grew up there. You ever hear of the State Hospital? On Wayne? Yeah, everybody's heard of Wayne Avenue. Yeah, a lot of stories came out of there. Well, the word is they're shutting it down. And I want you to get the scoop on it. Expose it. Do whatever it takes. Yeah, okay, easy. That's what I want to hear. I'm giving you a week. Deadline's Monday. A week? My daughter's birthday's in two days. I can't miss that. Hey, I can't help that. Last chance, remember? All right, I want it. You're taking Ellen with you. What's wrong with Ernie? I've got Ernie on another assignment. You know she's aiming for my job, right? Well, the way you're going, she just might get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could be a good reporter someday. And close the frickin' door! Hey! So I hear we're going to Dayton. Do you knock? No. When are we leaving? Uh, who even said you're going? Art told me. And did he tell you that I get final say? <laughs> you said you'd say that, and to tell you I'm going. Fine. But you're on camera, that's it. Oh, come on, Mark. I really want to learn the art and science of investigative reporting, and you're the best we've got. I know you're after my job. Look, I'm sick of lugging around that stupid camera, and if I can get some reporting credentials under my belt, I can get a job somewhere else. Why would you go somewhere else? Because in order to take your job, I'd have to bump you off, and I'm not quite there yet. All right. You want to learn investigative reporting? Find out everything you can about the Dayton Asylum. Okay, they don't call them asylums anymore, and... Where's a good place to start? Well, gee, you could try the internet. Screw you, Mark. What do you want? It's for Rachel. No, she's not here. She's at her friend's. Her birthday's not till Friday, I told you. Uh, I can't make her party, so I thought I'd give this to her today. God, Mark, you promised her. Yeah, I can't, there's nothing I can do about it. What is it this time? Planning a binge? Don't even care? No, of course I care. It's, it's work. Art's sending me out of town. How many birthdays have you missed because of work? Come on, Amanda. I've missed one of Rachel's birthdays. I was talking about mine. Amanda, wait! Wait a second. I mean, since Rachel's not here, can we at least talk? Okay. Let's talk. Let's start with, why can't you make it to Rachel's party? I have to go back to Dayton. What's so earth-shaking in Dayton that you have to miss your own daughter's birthday? Look, it's not about the story, okay? This is about my job. Art said this is my last chance. If, if I don't come up with something, I'm out. 
Yeah, well, art's an ass. You're better off working for someone else. God, do you know how tight the job market is for reporters right now? If I get fired, I'm out, completely out. You know, a year ago, you had your choice of jobs. It was a year ago. Yeah, before you started drinking. No. Before she died. She didn't just die, Mark. She committed suicide. That has nothing to do with you. Yeah, well, I wasn't there for her. You weren't there for us, okay? You guys weren't even that close. Maybe you need to go see a doctor. That's not gonna work. You don't know that. You don't even try. You don't try for our marriage. You don't try for your own daughter. I don't know, maybe I'll try something when I get back, okay? Yeah, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Why don't you go see a doctor instead of a bartender? Then maybe we can talk. Will you at least please give this to Rachel? Please call her on her birthday. What? Hey, I think I found something. Um, it's about the Dayton State Hospital. Some really weird stuff. What'd you find? Well, most of it dates back to the 60s and 70s. Um, some accusations against a few of the doctors. Accusations? Mm hmm. Um, well, let's see. Something called insulin shock. Electroshock, uh, drugs, brain surgery. Really sadistic stuff. Are the accusations well documented? Um, no lawsuits, uh, but there are a few internet articles and a short documentary. Well, uh, that's a start. All right, uh, tell it to you to book our flights. I already did. Uh, we leave first thing in the morning. Anything good? Art called. He got us an appointment with the hospital administrator. Art called you? Yeah, said he couldn't get a hold of you. Bullshit. Bullshit. Not my problem. Anyway, we have to be there at 10. Uh, you know how to get there? Yeah, I grew up here, remember? That's right. What made you leave? There was nothing to keep me here. What about your parents? Aren't they still around here? They're dead. Sorry. What about siblings? What, are you doing a story on me now? Not much of a story. Put up with this bullshit the entire trip. Look, if you're gonna come at me, at least grow up here. How's Amanda? I haven't seen her since the Christmas party. Back the fuck off. I'll see you in the lobby at 9 30. Three, 
rules, okay? One, I do all the talking. Two, the camera never stops rolling. And three, I do all the talking. You got it? I get it, Mark. Loud and clear. Run right into the floor. Whoa, whoa, set up slowly, slowly. Mark, this is Dr. Drexel, the hospital administrator. Did you eat breakfast? Yeah, a big one. I don't know what happened. That was embarrassing. So why don't we go into my office and you can rest there? Yeah, no, thanks. <clears throat> we can get on with the interview. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, f I'm fine. Yeah, only if you're up to it. <sighs> Are you sure you're up for this? Yeah, no, I'm, f I'm fine. I'm sorry. When's the last time you had a checkup? <laughs> it's been a while. Typical. Most men ignore their health until it becomes a problem. Right, your camera's ready. Thanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Drexel, for meeting with us. It's my pleasure. I'm glad someone's taking an interest. It's a sad time for us here at the hospital. What with the hospital closing and yeah. everything? Yes. This building, this facility, has been in existence since 1855. Really? Wow, that's impressive. Mm. Uh, and was it always a psychiatric hospital? Yes. At its peak, it had over 700 patients. Really? Can you tell us about some of those patients? Mm. Not specifically Privacy Act, yeah, but I can tell you a lot of breaking edge treatments were developed. We helped a lot of people regain their lives. Mm. But you couldn't help everyone, could you? I mean, some of your treatments uh, could have been considered even detrimental. pick on your hospital, Dr. Drexel, uh, but psychiatry in general has had some what we'll call um, disputed moments, yes? It's a science that has evolved. Different treatments, different techniques have been developed. Some worked exceptionally well. And some didn't. Can you tell me about those? Fair enough. Um, 
How about you give us a tour while you tell us about that? I uh, have some things to take care of. But uh, you can certainly wander around. I still have about a dozen inpatients in the north wing, so that's off limits. And I really am glad you're documenting this, and I hope you'll let me have a copy of the tape when you're done. Oh, I'm sure we can take care of that. Uh, actually, we'll have to speak to our editor first before we release anything. It's a formality, I'm sure you understand. Are you feeling better? Yes, I'm feeling fine, thank you. Get a checkup. Could be low blood sugar. Are you sleeping well? Yeah, I'm sleeping fine, thank you. Here's my card. Call me if you need anything. You or your story. Great. Thank you. We'll, uh... What? What's rule number one? You do all the talking. You violated rule number one. Don't do that again. Seriously? Uh, keep your shirt on. I'll get another one. Jesus.
use the big camera all the time. You've got to have the sticks on it all the time. I guarantee you, he's too hung over to even notice I switched to this one. Hey! What are you doing? Hi, uh, Chicago TV News. We're here doing a story about the hospital. Yeah, you shouldn't be in here. I'm sorry, Dr. Drexel said we could have a look around. I'm just trying to get a feel for the place. All right, well, if the doc says it's okay. I'm Sc <laughs> Scott Ryan. Hi, Ellen Kilpatrick. Irish? No. I'm just kidding. Yes, I am. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, Miss Ellen Kilpatrick from Chicago. I was actually just on my way out, but I guess I could show you around. Welcome to Dayton. Thanks, I'd appreciate that. Do you mind if I record? Well, that depends. Do I get to be on TV? That depends. Can you act? Watch this. <clears throat> this is Scott Ryan with the new episode of Irish Ghostbusters. Tonight with me, me new friend, Miss Ellen Kilpatrick. Right. You can't act. Got it. But the place is haunted, huh? I'm not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, what was this building used for? Uh, patient rooms. Uh, we actually kept a large number of the patients upstairs in larger bays but we had to keep some of the more challenged patients separate. Uh, up here is actually the rest of the hospital. Uh, I can show you, just let me stop over at my office. Okay. Well, thanks so much for the tour. You saved me several hours of wandering around. You're welcome, it was my pleasure. Oh, crap. What? My ride's gone. Damn it, Mark. Wait a minute, there was more than one of you? Yeah, yeah, my reporter, Mark, who is apparently an even bigger jerk than I thought. Straight to voicemail. So, uh, I take it you're gonna need a ride then? I hate to impose. It's just downtown. No, please. There's no problem at all. Thanks. Lead the way. Hey, you all right, buddy? You all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I think you've probably had enough. You should head out. What time is it? It's quarter of three. What are you? Uh, 35. Do you need me to call you a cab? Nope. Xenia? <laughs> Who the hell do you think you are? You sure you don't need a cab? No, no, I'm all right. Hey, uh, where's the children's home? Well, if you go right, it's about five miles, but it ain't there anymore. What happened to it? Tore it down. Sold it to some church or something. Huh. No surprise. All right, thanks. I'm sorry, I, something happened. Jesus, Mark, are you alright? I don't know, I, I, I was looking through a window in one of the buildings at the hospital and I, I guess I blacked out. And I woke up in Xenia. 
It's a town about 20 miles east of Dayton. Yeah, well, I've got something to do tonight. So, I will see you at the hotel restaurant in the morning. Yes. Who are you? Mark Wilcox, Channel 7 Chicago. TV news. Yes, investigative. What can I do for you, Mr. Wilcox? Well, I was kind of hoping I could dig through your archives. Working on a local story? Yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, the Dayton State Hospital is closing down and we're working on what kind of history on it. Could be a good story. We have chased rumors for years, but they never pan out. Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up here, so... Okay, sorry. Had to finish the day's news. Oh, yeah, deadlines. Would this be for shared credit? Well, I mean, I can try and work something out. Okay, fine. I'll take you down to the archive. It's down the hall. So, here you are. Yeah. It's kind of fancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's real fancy. Uh, any tips? Do you know the alphabet? I do know the alphabet. Yeah, okay, then you should be all right. Okay. So, yeah, everything's in alphabetical order. Just please put it back where it goes. Our librarian would kill me. Okay, yep, no, no worries. I'm on it. Okay. All right. Yeah, thanks. Finding anything useful? Uh, mostly tidbits. You know, this place is uh, ripe for digitizing. Sure. Do you have a hundred K? That would get us started. I think we started to digitize around 1980 and everything before that, you got to go through the files. How long are you here for? Well, the story's due Monday. Not much time. No. I tell you what, if you jot down a couple of key words for me, I can have some interns do a little digging. Oh my God, that would be amazing. Just remember shared credit. <laughs> shared credit. Yeah.
I spent the evening in the newspaper archives doing actual work. Uh, what were you doing? Moving on. What's the plan for the day? Okay. Um, well, I have a list of doctors that worked at the hospital in the 70s and 80s. Several of them ended up in the local paper for various reasons. One of them... Hans Drexel? Yeah. Her father? No, I'm thinking younger, more like a brother, uncle, something like that. Huh. Anyway, um, I want to go back to the hospital today and ask our Dr. Drexel a few more questions. Yeah, I bet you do. So I take it you never got into that locked building? No. Uh, well, I mean, at least I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I told you I blacked out or something. Right, right. Xenia. Orphanage. Right. Right. Listen, Mark, is all of this related? What? I mean, look, you've been acting really strange, and then with the fainting yesterday and the blackout last night, are you okay? I don't know. Let's get back out there. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilcox. I have appointments all over the morning. I just need a minute of your time. I found the names of a few doctors uh, uh, that used to work in the past and I thought maybe you could tell me something about them. I guess that all depends. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Walls, Ernie Walls. Doesn't ring a bell. When did he work here? Uh, 72. <laughs> 72? Way before my time. I'm afraid I can't help you, Mr. Wilcox. I have patience. Okay, Dr. Irma Maddox. Another old timer, I suppose. I don't know the name. Well, maybe this one will jog your memory. Dr. Hans Drexel. I'm guessing you already know Hans Drexel is my brother. I guess he might be. He was in the paper quite a few times. Your eyes are very bloodshot. Maggie, you've not slept well. Tell me anything about him? Like, when did he start here? He started as an intern in 72. He spent his entire career here, retired in 2015. As a psychologist? Psychiatrist. He specialized in what we now call post-traumatic stress disorder. Back then, it did not even have a name. Isn't that something that soldiers suffer from? You've heard of the Vietnam War. 
He had no shortage of patients. Okay, well, what about his treatment methods? They were never even approved. I have to go. Given where this so-called report is going, you're going to need an escort if you want to look around any further. Check with the receptionist. We apparently need to find this Hans Drexel. You think? That's him? Yes, Mark. Wilcox, a reporter. He suffers. His eyes are tired. Yes, he blacked out earlier. He's not sleeping. I gave him a prescription for Tamazepam. He looks familiar. I had a patient once. A case of severe depression. Demazepam is counterindicated of anyone who suffers from depression. Or anyone who abuses alcohol. His hands shake. We'll have to do something. He's almost at the darkest edge. Well, your sister has already done enough. Security tells me you were in the archives until two this morning. Did you find anything? Okay. You can't use it, not yet. Right. I promise. Not until your story comes out. Okay, well, there were doctors uh, at the hospital during the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They were treating combat stress, and there were a bunch of lawsuits. Medical lawsuits? It's not unusual. No, but it was the 60s, and it was very unusual in the 60s to settle out of court, and all of these settled out of court. Yeah, it's still not a lot to base the story on. But it's a start. And I uh, confronted the uh, administrator, Dr. Drexel. She's related to one of the older doctors that worked there. Did she confirm anything? No, but she got really defensive, which tells me that we're, we're on to something. Yeah, maybe. So I had my interns do a little digging. You were looking at the staff. We looked at the patients. Interesting approach. You would have thought of it eventually. That's in Springfield, about 30 miles east. Patients? Former. I thought you might want to talk to them. Yes, yes I do. Thank you. Appreciate this. You gonna go to her grave? Sorry. Your sister. You didn't go to the funeral. How'd you know about that? I 
don't let people go digging around my archives if I don't do some research on them. No, I don't think so. Why not? She's your only family, right? Yeah, but uh, we hadn't seen each other since we were teenagers. Phone call every now and then. I, I don't even know where she's buried. I took the liberty. This is her obit. She's in Valley View. It's near Xenia. You should go. Might help the healing process. I love the new model. Uh, as opposed to, say, nursing home care? Yeah, it's better for the patients, especially these patients. They love it. Well, I look forward to hearing from them. Well, they'll talk your arm off, but you gotta know it's not gonna make much sense. Okay. Be gentle with them. They are my patients and my friends. Okay. I will, I promise. Howard and Derek are playing cards, and Bradley is over there. Thank you. Let's get started. Hey, Howard, Derek. I'm Mark Wilcox. I'd like to ask you guys some questions. Is that okay? I won! You cheated! I'll go first. What are you guys playing? Cards. Um, where'd you live before here? Somewhere else? Uh, was it in the hospital in Dayton? Yeah. Uh, can you tell me about it? Yeah. We play cards. Okay, well, uh, like you're doing now, right? Yeah. Uh, did you like it there? It was okay. I didn't like it. They were mean. How were they mean, Derek? Well, the medicine tastes bad. There were shots. Those hurt. They, they tied up Howard sometimes. It was okay. Did they do anything else to you, Derek? I don't want to talk about it. Hey, I don't want to talk about it. What's going on here? I thought you were doing a story about their kid. Well, I am. Uh, I just need to get some background. That's all. Hey, I won. You need to leave. I'm sorry for upsetting you guys, okay? Again.
Hey, Amanda, I was uh, hoping I could say happy birthday to Rachel. Yeah, we're at the theater right now, the party room. She's kind of busy. Come on, uh, Amanda, it's only gonna take a minute. Take it easy, Mark. It's bad enough you missed her birthday. Now you want to interrupt her party. She's been excited about this all day. I told you, uh, I told you I'll make it up to her. Okay, I promise. Amanda, I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah, well, your best sucks. And I'm the one that has to keep the game and use it for you. I know. I'm sorry. I just... You know, I think... I think I'm on to a pretty good story here, and... Uh, I was thinking when I got back, you know, I could take some time off and maybe we could... Get together. Here's Rachel. Make it quick, okay? Hi, Daddy. Hey. Hey, sweetheart. Happy birthday. Thanks, Daddy. Are you having fun at your party? Yeah. We're in the movies in the party room. We had cake and popcorn, and Mommy even let me have some pop. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. Do you open your presents yet? It was very helpful of you to let us know the reporters were here. Well, it seemed innocent enough, but when they started asking questions about the hospital, I thought I should let you know. Poor Brad's been upset since they came. Well, we'll check him out. Have him back right before you know it. You're gonna hurt him! Fred, you need to calm down. Relax. Relax. I'm right here. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be back in the day. It's fine. It's fine. Mark! 
Mark, are you in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming. Just a minute. Coming. What? It's almost 9.30, are you okay? I just overslept. <clears throat> I'll be downstairs in a bit. Well, get some shit together. I've got something to show you and I think it's important. Yes, okay. I will be downstairs in a bit. I just gotta take a shower. So I was going through some of the footage from the nursing home from the other night, and I started running people through facial recognition software. It makes it easier when I start the editing process. And I decided to start with you so I wouldn't have to keep looking at your face. Uh, but when I ran you through the software, this is what came up. All right, so it's Bradley Williams. Right, on your facial recognition run. Okay, so what's your point? My point is, I've never seen a false positive like this that wasn't run on a family album. Like my dad and my brother, they come up in the same searches all the time. What are you saying? You said you were an orphan, right? Maybe he's an uncle? It could be worth looking into. No change since the last time we saw him. Insulin therapy? It <laughs> didn't work with this patient. No. We'll have to resort to more drastic treatment. I'm not comfortable with that. No choice. The reporter's going to find out and we'll all be exposed. Well, he's done nothing wrong. Not in our eyes. But the public's perception will be our legacy. All the work that we have done will be ignored will be vilified like the others. Wilcox will make his report, but he must report the truth. He might resent this. That's a chance we'll have to take. Springfield, uh, and previously had been in the, the state hospital. Huh. What? Nothing. Have you visited your sister's grave? No. 
It's too bad. Hey, I looked up some of your stories. You've done some pretty hard-hitting stuff. Why the interest? I'm looking for a good investigative reporter. I have a job, thank you. Yeah, a TV job. That's not where good investigative journalism is. <laughs> TV's okay. Bullshit! You work months on a story for what? 60 seconds? Yeah. That's not real reporting. <sighs> okay, point taken, but my family's in Chicago, so... Well, bring them here. I know it's just Dayton, but the politics are really good here. It's fascinating. Seriously. Um, I don't think Mom might go for it. Well, sell her on it. I mean, this is a much better place to raise a kid than Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it. No, I gotta take this. I'm serious. Let me know. Yeah. Nothing like being on time. Oh, for God's sakes. What did you find? Well, not much about Williams, but he was injured uh, in a fire at the hospital back in the 80s. Um, there was an investigation of the fire and rumors of a, a cover-up. Conspiracies and cover-ups. Fun. Yeah, well, that's where we live. Here he is. Hey. Hey. Mark, this is Scott Ryan. Hey, so you're our guy, huh? Yeah, so did you tell him? No, I thought I'd let you. It's strange. This morning I heard Natalie talking about the infirmary. Hmm. That building you tried to get into. Oh, okay. No one's been in there for years, and I saw them taking in a patient that I didn't recognize. He was in a wheelchair. A uh, patient from the hospital? No. Williams. Maybe. This afternoon I went to go check it out. Doors were still locked. And the light was on. And I heard someone screaming. We need to get over there. Yeah. Thanks. That's it. Like, there? Looks like there's someone up there. Well, good, let's go. I don't think we should go in. Are you kidding me? This is what we're here for. That's what the story is. We could get arrested. Do you even want to be a reporter? Do you want to be someone's bitch in prison? Fine, but I'm taking the small camera. I'm not lugging that big ass thing if we have to make a run for it. Consult from time to time, but usually only see one or two of them. Today they were all there. Even Dr. Drexel's brother. Dr. Oh, Drexel. Yeah. You know, people say that he's not entirely up there, but I mean, I met him once or twice. He seems okay.
Just a few minutes. I thought so. I thought I recognized her. She was supposed to be dead. That's what I told him to tell you. I, I couldn't bear you knowing. Thank you, Doctor. And don't blame him. I don't understand. Electroshock therapy. We used it here. No kidding. I read your papers. It's only partially successful. I was one of his early patients. You're barbaric. No, no, I volunteered. I knew exactly what I was getting into. That's crazy. That's what a lot of people call me. They call me crazy. the same problems as you. You want to end it all? Yeah. Uh, I even came close a couple times. Okay. 
sorry it didn't last. It looks really painful. That's why we quit using it. Some patients would tolerate it more than others. Bradley, he tried so hard. He wanted so badly to be healed. Yeah, but it didn't work. Unfortunately, only short-term relief. We gave it up once other options were available. Other options? Mm, drug therapy primarily. Some drugs were really effective. But shock is still used when other methods fail, but usually under heavy sedation, right? What about my father? We tried the drugs, but they didn't work. We keep an eye on him, as with all our former patients. Well, at least we did. We won't be able to do much more with the hospital closing. We wanted you to know the real story you were about to write about. The rumors, which is what everyone asks about. Why didn't you tell me about him? Bradley was adamant, and his son not know he was ill. I called it insanity back then. There was a stigma, even with relatives. Back to the home? Ah, oh, yes, please. Okay. I hope you understand that while not everything we did here was successful, we did it to help, mm -hmm. to help the patients. Yeah, but you did it in secret. That's not right. People, people wouldn't understand. Maybe, maybe not. May we have the tape, please? I'd rather not be shown. Uh, I'm sure, but no. <laughs> There's no way I can let you bury this. No, she's right. The story has to get out. I was afraid that would be your position. <gasps> Doctor! You can't! What are you doing? I'll be ruined! We'll all be ruined! Give me that tape! And put the gun down, Doc! Hey, hey, hey. At least we got to keep the footage. <coughs> yeah, well. Even if they had taken it, I had a backup. You might just make a good reporter yet. Aw, oh, shucks. Coming from you, Mark. I'll take it. You can keep this. <laughs> I am done. Wait, I don't want this. Don't look at me. The Edges Psychiatric Hospital ends a legacy of helping thousands of patients. Though they used what some have called barbaric techniques, it was all done with the very best of intentions. This is Mark Wilcox, Chicago Channel 7 News. Daddy! Hey, you monkey head. How was your soccer practice? Bye. Great! Do I really get In to stay with sky. you for the whole weekend? Yes, Seem you do. Your mom said it's okay. Figured out but I have a favor to ask you. There. I want you to meet someone, but it's going to take a few hours to drive Bye. me. You okay with that? Sure. Flying. Who is it? Your grandpa. I have a grandpa? You sure do. You do have a grandpa. He's really nice. Feeling the wind, it knows them. But there's rugs stacked on top of one another And potted plants that never grow My rash love won't last forever And someday soon I'll leave home I'll leave home Clouds drifting by, free to go wherever, with nothing left to tether them to the ground. I hate feeling trapped, 
especially in December, when I feel that pressure from myself. With rocks stacked on top of one another, in potted plants that never grow. Someday soon.